I never missed in my 50 years, ever missed a deadline. As part of the, like what I considered professionalism. And an art critic is a professional uh, in a world uh, filled with amateurs, because uh, everybody's got an opinion. An art critic is somebody that writes about art for money. Uh, everybody else, uh, um, you go to an opening, the opening is crowded with art critics. They all have an opinion, and why not? But uh, I put my, I publish my opinions, and for better or worse, uh, I was paid to do it. And I've been interested in art and art history. I was a teacher, and uh, somebody offered me a chance to write about art for money. And I thought, well, why not? And so uh, I began writing for the Herald. The Daily Gallery is the forum for artists. Uh, artists are often a bit sort of, oh, the Daily Gallery take a big percentage and the whole lot. But the Daily Gallery have an absolute function for, as a forum for artists to present themselves to the public. The art critic makes a little link with the Daily Gallery by writing the art exhibition up as news of, of some sort. The, the days of an art critic being slaying the bad artists and praising the uh, well not and they still praise the good, that's a very, very important part. But mostly now they act as a sort of uh, interpreter. The relationship is really with the public, not with the artist or with the gallery. The critic should get people going to look and think about the art. I've always reviewed the exhibitions as close to the beginning. When I began as a critic, I always went to the exhibition, went to the paper and wrote for the next day. And uh, I found that very satisfying. I'm not a great reader of my reviews. Once the copy is in the hands of the sub-editors, uh, that's it, I, I've done. I look and see what space I've been given, whether anybody's changed things. Uh, but no, I'm not a great reader of my work. I see my role diminished, in a sense. When I began, the whole idea of art being shown in dealer galleries in Auckland was very new and it was very very exciting and what's more this was back in the 60s and 70s art were in New Zealand was changing developing gathering strength uh, taking force some trying to be keeping up with modern tendencies overseas, others insisting that they link with New Zealand society. But the old landscape painting had gone out the door. There was a real sense of force in New Zealand art. It became a wonderful and very powerful force, I think, in New Zealand society. And people argued about it, they were concerned. They weren't just collectors, the art was meaningful. And maybe that's changed. The whole business of art auctions, art collectors, has grown exponentially alongside the development of names in New Zealand art. You know, names that have become honoured because they are dead now. And for the first time, I have seen in my time the, the death of very, very fine artists, notably, of course, McCann. Poor in his lifetime and seen his prices rocket. It's a big change. It's become much more a market part of a huge, now worldwide art fair. And, um, I don't know. Perhaps a little of the spirit has gone. It's not, uh, it's much more peripheral in our life, in the life of society at large than it was. My job was to respond to what was on the walls, not tell people about the artist's life. 